Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, jointly organised by ProAV Asia, together with Shaw, that aims to highlight advanced techniques in portable location recording. The aim of this discussion is to openly discuss how today's audio producers can capture the best possible sound in the field using recommended equipment in a variety of scenarios. Therefore, we'll be exploring the challenges, trends and advances in technology for location sound recording, including the benefits that digital wireless audio brings. Audio in film and television is a vital part of the storytelling process. Whether it's voices, music or sound effects, the audio adds layers to a production that contribute to the emotion, drama or story. Of course, since those black and white silent movies added microphones to the mix 100 years ago, we have come a long way. It's hard to imagine watching the latest Top Gun film, Premiership football game or nature programme without stereo sound, let alone 5.1 or immersive. As viewers, we have all witnessed the extraordinary rise of independent productions hosted by cable channels including HBO, Disney+, Netflix, Prime Video. The supply curves can only go up as demand rises, but as inflation bites, some services are reporting a fall in subscriptions. So, in a bid to outgun the competition, each streaming service is drawing audiences with an increasing amount of unique, exclusive content. The knock-on effect has been a rise in location sound and outdoor production setups. Before we commence the session, just a few items of housekeeping. Firstly, this webinar has been recorded and will be available for playback once it has been edited. At that point, we will share the link on our ProAVLH homepage for you to playback. Secondly, as the session progresses, please feel free to ask any questions by typing into the question pane. If you cannot see the question pane, there are one or two places you can find it, depending on how you are logged in today. If you are using the web app, the go to webinar web app, you should notice a question mark in a circle. Simply click on that. If you are using the actual application go to webinar, look for the dark grey toolbar with the orange box and white arrow. Click on the orange box and you should be allowed to access the question pane there. Please submit your questions during the discussion, which we will hold until the end of the session. During the webinar, please bear with us if we experience any audio technical issues. We will endeavour to troubleshoot these should any gremlins emerge. It is my pleasure to introduce to you today two highly respected specialists from Southeast Asia. Adrian Ewerman joins us from Kuala Lumpur today. Good afternoon, Adrian. Good afternoon. Glad to be here. Thank you for joining us. Adrian is currently the head of post production in the audio department at the Malaysian satellite television IPTV provider Astro. As a former graduate of SE Institute Singapore, his resume includes impressive spells at Imaginex Studios, EUNU Media Group and Supernova Media, where he has worked on some of the biggest motion pictures in Malaysia. Adrian is also a lecturer and has taught at the National Academy of the Arts, Culture and Heritage and the Ocean Institute of Audio Technology. Just to hop over the causeway in Singapore, we're also joined by Alan Chong from Specialist Location Recording Provider, Mike Check, one, two. Welcome, Alan. Hi, Richard. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us. Founded in 2013 as a location sound re rental house for larger production formats, Mike Check, one, two has evolved significantly and now offers distribution, retail sales, system integration and training. The entire team of self-acclaimed audio geeks are all location sound recorders or audio engineers. And finally, VKTO from Shaw joins us from their Brass Bassa headquarters in Singapore. Good afternoon. Hi, Richard. Thanks for reaching out. A senior specialist of market development for Shaw, Vic will be interjected from time to time with relevant, useful technical tips and insights that we may be unaware of, in addition to our Shaw continues to upgrade their solutions to meet market demand. Vic brings many years of pro audio experience with him, having served in sales for five years at Singapore's most established SI and distributor, Electronics and Engineering. So, before we begin, I'd like to encourage our audience participants to message us on this platform with any relevant questions pertaining to location recording. We'll endeavour to discuss some of these in the time we have remaining on air this evening. So, let's begin. Location sound recording broadcast has evolved significantly. So uh, we want to find out what advantages are there from switching from analog to wireless and why are some recorders resisting that switch? Um, 
Adrian, you're no stranger to digital, are you? I doubt if you've ever been in the analog world to start with. I don't know. Tell me more. When I started out in location, it was mostly analog. Uh, but we already had a little bit of digital. We, we had wireless um, already at that point. But not like the, the same way you see today. Uh, not the integration of uh, digital transmissions and uh, fully remote controllable uh, features. But certainly if we're talking about the switch between wireless and analog and its benefits uh, from analog to wireless and its benefits. I think in the production workflow in uh, Location Sound, uh, you, well, one can't deny that it speeds up the workflow significantly um, because you don't have to think about uh, cable management anymore. It's less clutter. You are free to roam around the set as you wish. And generally, um, it allows you distance. Uh, most importantly, actually, um, and just saves a lot of time. Just you know, um, having to wrangle cables and stuff like that. It is uh, really uh, the switch to wireless has been, or uh, so even uh, if we're talking about switching fully to wireless. I think that they will eventually come, and is heading towards that direction. And it's um, I can only see advantages really. In your experience, have you had any problems with wireless? Has it gone down? Has it really failed you? Have you had to have a, any redundancy there? Or has it all been gone perfect to date? Well, um, to be completely honest, uh, no, there is no such thing as a perfect, um, you know, a perfect workflow, a perfect system, or uh, even a perfect product per se. So there, there will always be setbacks, but it's about the kind of uh, contingencies and redundancies that you keep, that you have in place. And so using a very a reliable enough system or ecosystem that allows for those redundancies and backups and feel safe, if you would. It's a little bit undeniable that there will be things that go down uh, one way or another due to unforeseen circumstances. And there can be many in a production workflow. But if you have a, a, a solid uh, system that you can rely on, it really does make things a lot um, more efficient, say especially uh, since we're on the topic of sure digital uh, systems, Axiom Digital. Uh, I think there are many features within that set that can really help um, troubleshooting and um, even just the ease of workflow from the get-go, you know, from uh, preparing for the shoot, through the shoot, all the way to you know, the end of the shoot, say. There are proper workflows in place to make sure that the, the entire shoot runs and production Run smoothly. Let me bring in Alan from Mike Check One Two, if I may. Obviously, you deal with a large fraternity of customers, uh, similar backgrounds to Adrian and beyond, who all have various problems, challenges, and uh, they work in the digital world, and some probably work still in the analog world. Why would you resist the switch to go to digital, for example? I mean, why would you stay in the analog world or is it just completely irrelevant now? Is everybody in the digital world from your experience now? I think largely most of the recordings are still uh, using analog wireless. Mainly, I think because in Asia, the the larger set of, you know, all the transmitters and stuff and the receivers and stuff, and they are still analog. So to be able for them to actually turn over fully to digital might be um, a bit, you know, tight on the budget, maybe. <laughs> Cost prohibitive, yeah. yes. Yes, because they, they have to seriously, you know, ditch their analog and then go full digital or partial, maybe partial upgrades and stuff. But for those um, recordings or rental houses that have a larger set of uh, analog wireless, I see they might have some difficulty slowly turning over because of the yeah, budgeting stuff. But yeah, oh, that, that, will, that is ser uh, serious, quite a serious uh, challenge for, for, especially for a lot of freelancers out there. Even I myself, I, I, well, I do a partial upgrade uh, about um, six, year, six, seven years back. So, uh, from full analog to uh, like a couple of four channel, two channel, four channel digitals. We start from there. And then you realize the beauty of a digital wireless uh, microphone system on, on, on a few recording. Yeah, there are a lot of advantage. When I first came across uh, digital wireless, um, firstly, definitely will be the lack of, uh, or rather 
the compounder is totally missing or we call it compounderless, right? Where we are so used to analog wireless and where, you know, we are so used to the compounding you know, stuff uh, during the transmission. The audio quality wise definitely improved on the compoundless uh, 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 digital wireless system like the Shure Action. So like certain micing situation where we might, it might be quite nasty for, for analog compounder, but sound at least a bit smoother on the uh, compoundless system, the digital wireless system. That is definitely a, uh, a you know, great improvement on wireless audio. Uh, the other thing will be the uh, re the return of control back to the sound mixer because some of it uh, during operation, uh, during filming, during operation, we are talking about uh, there are a lot of gain adjustment on the talent wireless where the boom operators or the utilities, well, they have to tweak the gain of the transmitter and stuff. So now all the gain structure, gain staging returns back to the sound mixer where, because we have full control over on our receivers where we can adjust the, the transmitter gains uh, uh, on the, on or gain staging back on our own uh, sound card. Yeah, that's that's actually good, especially on wireless booming. Traditionally, how we use, uh, when we use the analog plug-ons on the on the boom microphones at the end of our boom pole, uh, where we have to comps the boom operator that, okay, tweak it, Two stop up, two stop down, <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> so once we go into the digital world, um, either you pad it down or, or you just leave it full open. You just pad or you just uh, uh, turn the attenuation, minus of attenuation down if you know there's a loud scene and stuff and return back all the gain control back, uh, all the gain staging back to the sound mixer where we can actually tweak our trims. We can we can tweak our uh, a, a receiver uh, uh, or uh, the the receiver outputs and stuff. So all the controls are back to the sound mixer and the boom operator can just focus on booming. That is that is a great uh, 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 part of uh, using digital wireless is also. And other than that, I think range wise, well, when, when we reach over to, or rather when we start adopting digital wireless, uh, there are a few skeptical uh, thing that on our mind is audio. So, on the audio part is, you know, it's settled. We listen to it. It sounds great without the compounder. The next thing is range. So how, how would it fare? Is it efficient enough? You know, because uh, most of the digital wireless may be offered 2 milliwatts, 5 milliwatts, uh, 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 10 milliwatts, uh, 50 milliwatts, you know, like comes kind of transmission where the traditional analog wireless, uh, 30 milliwatts, 50 milliwatts, 100 milliwatts, you know, down to, down, yeah, down to quarter down to a 250 milliwatts transmission. So is it efficient enough for a 10 milliwatt to, to achieve that distance that we want? And surprisingly, yes, it does. <laughs> Actually, when, when I was, uh, when I was um, yeah, using the Sure Action Digital, yes, the range is really great, especially on LPDAs where we are on the fins. Well, it's, it's great. Yeah, well, while we're on that topic, I'll just like to touch on the wireless booming. Say. So while we're on the topic of uh, analog and wireless, there is still that um, the notion of the mindset of like having a tethered or a cable boom going from the boom operator back to the sound mixer. That, that um, somehow gives confidence of, say, safety or security that it is an analog signal. There's nothing that can go wrong because the boom microphone traditionally is a wired signal and that's the the microphone that you would you would almost guarantee you success of capturing something with no dropouts and no uh, loss in quality so there is a hesitation um it's almost like the camp is split in two between do you go wireless boom or do you go cable boom uh, and it's still up for debate today uh, i i myself find that i much prefer it took me a while to make the transition from a wired boom to a wireless boom but once i did i, I never turned back because my, it's so convenient just had, being able to get my boom operator like distances away, miles away, maybe not miles, but quite a, a far distance away from me and, you know, be able to travel freely and to, to tackle every scene. Some scenes are very dynamic. Um, you know, uh, this day and age, not everyone is shooting static shots anymore. Not just a usual coverage of maybe a, a wide, a medium, a close up and a two shot over the shoulder. They're doing a lot more dynamic style shots these days. And that uh, requires mobility, especially for a boom operator. 
he needs to be able to travel the set without tripping on himself or or the cameraman tripping on the boom cable going all the way back to to the sound mixer who might be in um, video village you know, that might be quite a, a, a stretch away so i think um yes that convenience and that um that freedom wireless gives for um uh, or is able to to give for a boom operator uh, that is something that for me um it, it's worthwhile making that switch from uh, a cable boom to a wireless boom for that reason and of course a lot more features uh, as Alan has touched on uh, digital transmissions are very different than analog transmissions uh, or wireless transmissions the sound quality is quite amazing um honestly if you if you do a line test sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a cable boom and a wireless boom depending on the quality of the system of course but um if you were to tell somebody that you recorded on a, a digital wireless uh plug on a boom and tell them that you recorded this on a wire it's tattered and you, they won't be able to tell the difference unless they hear it side by side and even then it might be difficult uh, that's how good the quality of um the capturing of audio uh, is these days with digital transmission yeah i think it's pretty much it's more into the mindset so as what Adrian just said i can see the consensus the argument between um you know the workflow so we can see that pretty much is more into um, the transition the confidence of all those uh, boom arm operators um, in the past we can see that um, even for the rock star even for performance venue or even for house of worship uh, they pretty much they said hey i'm still ready to go for a wired microphone um it's pretty much just like about, about the concept so whenever there's a, a wireless microphone has been you know has been uh, invented in the market so that's where the argument comes so how far or how much of improvement we can do you know um transitioning from analog wireless microphone to digital wireless microphone so uh i would say it's a matter of time to really um you know to educate key important things right now is about education so that's where that um you know we are here to to, to give this kind of support um you know um sharing session uh coming from malaysia side adrian uh, even my chat one too um it's all to me personally it's more into the mindset so um how are we going to really convince you know from the clients even for in the past as well um initially when nokia i mean it's not much relevant how are we trans transitioning from a, a normal phone from a nokia phone into a smartphone devices so i think this is more into the similar ideas of the current era that we are living right now so it's just a matter of time a wired mic series um especially for boom arm operators um they are really have more confidence so um that's where we really need to really um educate them you know from the wireless series with digital as what um um alan you just mentioned you know how does the technology behind the digital wireless mic um you know in terms of uh, control system or to remote manage all of the devices right all the digital wireless mic system um without having any failure or even have all those report uh goes back to the staging you know all those um uh, some recorder that you know what are the the situation currently they are facing so um i can see that um from this technology points of view education is important to send across to all of those um, location sound so it's just a matter of of time for us how are we going to accept as you can see right now iphone even though the price is exorbitant but people are willingly to you know um to find a way to invest it because they believe in the technology before we head into the next question, let me just remind our audience members out there, if you've got a question, please send it in on the methods I told you at the start of the webinar. Let's, let's move on a little bit. There's a multitude of challenges uh, that we face today when recording on location. Um, let me start with yourself, Alan. Again, your wide fraternity of uh, users and, or should I say, end users, customers, what what sort of feedback are you getting today in terms from your customers about what challenges they're facing when recording on location? I think the challenges come actually actually when we are doing a large format show where we need like 12, 16 channels of RF when it comes to frequency coordination and the amount of space being a lot, uh, RF space being a lot over the air and 
how much uh, can we slot in 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 a particular bandwidth. Uh, that that will always be a the challenges when we are talking about a documentary situation. I think not much of a challenge, <laughs> but when we are coming uh, when we are coming into a multi multi channel wireless uh, 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 show, that that will really be the challenge, and that is where the ability to network all the ADX five D receivers and able to coordinate. Uh, the frequency via the channel channel scan and then deploy deploying of all the free frequencies all onto the receivers and you know quickly sync up the 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 transmitter that's where the upper hand of uh sure action uh digital wireless is that's that that is that is really a, a fabulous when i first try, tried it and like wow you know when i this thing just you know scan and deploy in less than like what three minutes two minutes <laughs> which is like eight channels you're talking about eight channels of deployment uh yeah so that is really uh sort of that's the challenge today and that is i think that is what sure did to reply to the challenge which is which is good i definitely would like to um you know to conquer with Alan's side because uh we can see there's a lot of challenges in a lot of the news um, you know you really need um, a wide bandwidth you know, because different type of country has different type of um, regulations. So as you can see right now, we see there's a lot of, um, you know, um, telcos that has already um, acquired a certain bandwidth. Uh, for example, in Singapore, uh, 700 megahertz to 900 megahertz. So they have allocated a certain bandwidth um, that, you know, purely just for telco to use it. So even in Philippines as well, I realized that there's a lot of congestion of RF. And in fact, in this say for location sound engineer or even for you to do a reality show, um, in order for you to do um, frequency coordination is very critical because first of all, it's about saving your time. Second is you cannot afford to have any uh, failure because each of the show is a mission critical. So we do take that all of the show is important. You know, um, that's where that, you know, time is the essence for everybody. And in fact, if you say any failure, uh, you cannot really just to repeat, to go to the talent and to recap back all the situation back again. So for us, that's where that, um, you know, we feel one of the challenge is definitely RF, radio frequency. Um, that's where with um, the technology that we have, digital wireless mic, we are able to support uh, the kind of range, you know, we have a wide bandwidth to really cater around the world, in fact, for, for the series. We find that, um, as, as the, the two gentlemen already alluded to, there is, there is, of course, a need for quick control, monitor, and deployment. Uh, that's uh, Obviously, if it's networked, it's, it's even better because you have a centralized system to control all your, your units, per se. And you could even be a case where one unit is controlling another unit you know, because they all network together uh, if they're over Dante or any type of audio over IP. Uh, for me, uh, one of the challenges that I used to face uh, before um, digital transmissions uh, was actually attenuating transmitters on body packs that are hidden uh, in the actor's what, costumes. So before before this, before I had uh, control using either Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz, uh, remotely, I had to send perhaps myself or my utility or the boom operator to go and attenuate each and every one of the actors' um, body pack transmitters. And that can be a lot of, um, it's a very time consuming process because sometimes you get, uh, this day and age, we have a lot of dynamic style narrative shoots where the actors are uh, encouraged to be more expressive, if you would. So they can be whisper silent and shouting in the same scene. And that seems to be what's encouraged by the directors these days, to have that kind of expressive um, you know, performances. And that needs to be captured. Uh, one, so two things we have to address here. One of it is having a system with a high dynamic range or enough dynamic range to capture the whole performance before clipping. So some systems um, actually use um, dual AD converters, such as Sure, and that helps a lot uh, in taming or controlling um, uh, peaking or distortion and then we see some digital systems with 32-bit floats uh, incorporated and it's 
if I'm not mistaken, they they more or less come to about the same thing uh, or give the same results per se. Um, and some brands have their own proprietary ones uh, to handle wide dynamic range. But another thing is actually just remote control of levels and gain and trim from your where you are uh, via through maybe the receiver or maybe an app controlling the transmitter on the body pack, uh, the body pack transmitter on the actor. That saves a ton of time. Like it saves a ton of time, maybe a few minutes for every scene, and that equates to like hours if you put it all up together and accumulate. And not to mention that it makes things more systematic and efficient because a lot of times the last thing you want to hear as a sound man on set is the AD calling out um, to the calling out we are waiting on sound. That's the last thing you want to hear. Whenever you want to go and change, uh, we try to change the um, the levels on an actor. The last thing you want to hear is the AD saying, "All right, okay, we're waiting on sound. Two minutes, three minutes, whatever it is." And you you know the the type of stares you get after that from every other department. You know, we're just like, it's a nightmare. Yeah, you know, you feel the wrath of every department's eyes watching you. <laughs> as you, And, you know, there's no guarantee that um, once you change the setting, you would you still probably have to get them to test it out first. And then that takes a lot of time. So, um, but it's a function of two things. So having a wide dynamic range and having remote control over certain of these um, critical parameters that you can trigger from, from your um, mixing console, if you would, or your cart. For me, that is probably one of the biggest um, benefits of having a digital uh, wireless system. And it's probably the one that uh, I have enjoyed the most um, in recent times. And further, I think it's not only for the remote management. I believe um, how are you going to manage the situation if one of the channel frequency has been interfered? So I think this is one the very important thing that... Um, you know, a lot of uh, location sound engineer or even for those who is doing movie shoot, um, especially reality show, when you go live. So when you go live, you can afford to really um, do a manual change of transmitter. So um, we do have a technology that um, can do such uh, automatic uh, frequency changes, or we call it as uh, interference detection and avoidance. So meaning to say that uh, we have a certain add-on accessories um, you know, there's a brain behind it that can support um, the excellent digital wireless mic system. So as and when one of the talent frequency has been affected, their transmitter. So um, traditionally, you will need to change through manual, take the microphone back. But is there any technology to do it like automatic? Yes, we do that. We have a backend system that uh, without having to do a manual change. So, you know, there's a technology behind it that provides the backup frequency for you. And then whenever there's a talent's frequency has affected, then automatically it will change into a new frequency. So back and forth. So I think potentially these are very important things that, um, or I would say it's good um, technology to share with all those engineers as well, because it really saves a lot of time. For me, usually when I share these things, even to Ellen as well, um, you know, it's, um, you know, that's a beauty part about digital wireless mic. You know, you can have all this technology of the inter, the, the interoperability, you know, how are you going to scale into the next, um, you know, uh, redundancy system for the transmitter? Yeah, the multi banks of frequencies actually will definitely will help on the uh, reality show. Yeah, when when sometimes we'll be thrown into ex uh, exterior locations where you really, you know, do a scan, and then the rest of it maybe you let the uh, frequency server to to do the job for you to like switch to switch to B bank frequencies and stuff like that. And the best part I think is the is the ability to sync uh uh in a live uh situation where you can actually sync up the transmitter via show link and then your transmitter will just change to a new frequency settings. That'll be great. Touching on on the remote actually it's more critical for the remote control of gain when we are talking about when we are doing an interview with the ministers where we only have like <laughs> half an hour of time, you know, sit down, that's it, then he's going to fire. So I think most of the sound recordings normally they will go into two situations, over gain it or under gain it. Okay, you can, you, you might not be getting it right. On, on the analog wireless. And analog wireless normally, because the problem with analog wireless, it, it really depends on your settings of your gain, the modulation of audio to get the proper range that you might expect. But the beauty of digital wireless is like, okay, 
maybe you might undergain it now, but it doesn't really affect your RF performance because it's digital data and not, not like FM, you know, transmission and stuff. So, and, and also now with the remote, we are being like on the fly while, while we are taking on the first questions of the ministers, when the ministers are answering the first questions on the fly, we can actually, you know, set the propaganda for him. And yeah, that, that is even more critical for news actually, for the news guy. So when they are really, you know, on the run, not much time to, to, to set their transmit again and stuff. Alan, when you are on the fly, like you just described, like doing a ministerial setup, are you are you really troubleshooting with your ears or are you troubleshooting with your eyes and looking at the uh, looking at the software to guide you? Both my ears and and the eyes, I would say, because uh, well, we we will have well we are accustomed to certain levels when you know, we know that okay it's, it's hitting uh, zero VU or, or minus twenty dBFS VU. We are talking about uh, the loudness, all right. So more or less, we are, our ears are accustomed to that. So we know that at certain loudness on our headphones, we are almost there at zero view loudness. So um, so on the fly, uh, besides checking the meter, besides using our ears, so sometimes the good thing about it is like, let's say we undergain it or overgain it for the ministers. So on the fly, we can just change him, change his game setting, which is good. That, that's a great part of, of having the, the, the remote. I mean, one of the great parts. Just a reminder to our audience, please keep your questions coming. It's not too late. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, let's go into a, a scenario uh, with you. Uh, let's start with yourself, Adrian. That Your bosses from upstairs give you a, a large budget to spend and they say, right, go and get yourself a portable wireless system. You've, you, I'm sure you've done your homework. You've got your favourites like everybody. What would you look for in that portable wireless system if you're going to go out and buy it on behalf of your bosses or for yourself, for example? Are you looking at reliability? Are you looking at durability, range, portability, and increasingly these days, GUI? I don't know. What would you look for? I would like to say a, a combination of all the above that you've stated, actually. But um, because well, there are a lot of brands that uh, professional audio uh, systems that do a very good job, especially I find these days, a lot, a lot of manufacturers do a good job squeezing a lot of features into a very small footprint, which is amazing. Um, you see um, dual channel receivers that's equipped with um, AES out, uh, which is one of my favorite things, digital uh, IOs. Um, the signal of a digital, of an AES out sounds way cleaner and way better than analog out. Pro um, probably a lot to do with the fact that it goes through less D to A and E to D conversions. Okay. When it goes to a digital signal, it stays in digital signal and it goes into your record as a digital signal and stays there like that. But um, I'm very much um, into the audio over IP. For me, that's a step towards the future. And it's something that has been implemented with Sure with their Exim digital range. Um, maybe not the uh, ADX5D, but uh, with the other systems. And I feel uh, moving forward, I would like to see more implementation of uh, Dante and I would also like to see more integrated systems where you have a body pack uh, receiver and you're able to then slot them into racks um, that will um, add, there are also antenna combiners if you would so basically taking four ADX 5Ds putting them into a, a rack with uni slot or super slot and getting them all networked via Dante so you have the option of taking them out of the rack putting them in the back, going portable, or putting them into a card-based system. Um, that, that would be fantastic, um, you know, uh, to top off already a lot of great features that Shure can offer with the ecosystem. Um, what else would I want? I would want a way, um, basically an entire ecosystem that's, that can talk to each other. That for me is, uh, is a mark of um, convenience and a mark of, being able to work um, in whatever situation, in whether it's uh, broadcast or whether it's a narrative shoot or whether it's ministers or ENG um, live shows, I, I really want one system for every situation as opposed to having four to five sets of different systems for per use case. So what if, if I was given, you know, the um, liberty to go and buy a system, I will look for the most um, integrated one that can cover all my bases. It's interesting you brought uh, described Dante Networking because that's 
going to be form a large part of the next question, but uh, Alan, may I bring you in? Obviously, you get customer feedback again. Um, what are they looking for in a portable wireless system these days? Is it similar to what uh, Adrian just mentioned, or are they looking for different varied features? On the production sound side, we are more, I think the current industry challenge will be how many channels how many channel of wireless can we squeeze into a tiny little box? Four? <laughs> I think most of us, uh, uh, we know that yeah, a lot of manufacturers are coming out with a four channel receivers and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> maybe um, not in the tiny little box because I, I, I don't think so. It's, it's viable for that, you know, small slot receivers to have four channel. I myself, I'm not comfortable with that kind of setup, but I think it'd be great, like maybe a, a, a half U with a four channels that we can put inside the sound bag you know, something small enough to slot into the back behind, right? That that will that will be that will be great. Obviously, something that that size will definitely you will, you will have Dante. You can power by PoE, so we can cut down all that power cable and all that you know audio cables and run on one uh, land cable. That will be great. If you're talking about range wise, um, keep it that way. I think sure doing fine. I think car the current. Uh, range are pretty in impressive. Audio are pretty, pretty in impressive. You're talking about GUI, I think um, with a little bit of uh, integration of third-party routers, we can actually use the Sure Channel Plus. We yep. can actually remote all the transmitter with our, with our cell phones. IPad. Yeah, yeah iPad, iPad, cell was... phones. And so, or, or we don't really have to run the full-blown uh, uh, wireless, wireless work bench. bench. Yeah, yeah maybe for wireless work bench, maybe you just need for a large format, we need to scan and stuff. But I think it will be quite handy for the utility guy or the boom ops to hold the, 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 the phones and then just adjusting the gains for the uh, true show link, of course, and then integrating a third party router. This is what I did for, for, for one of the narratives that I finished in three months. So I just integrated some of the off the shelf uh, routers and then I you know, download the apps and then I can just, you know, tweak around with the apps to adjust all the different settings for all the different actors, right? That That is great. And that, yeah, those are the stuff that I think you can further uh, uh, look into it or maybe a smaller version of the uh, uh, the access point, the showing access point, <laughs> maybe something smaller <laughs> for, the, for, for yeah. the back. <laughs> yeah, something currently, for the back. Currently, yeah, the currently one is a bit big. So yeah, I, I can mount it on the sound card, but I think on the back rig, maybe uh, uh, maybe something smaller. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be great. Yeah. Also the batteries part of it because, um, oh, I mean the transmitter size. Uh, because currently if we are, we, we, you will be good something, there'll be something in between the ADX1 and the ADX1M, something in between that. No, okay. that, that would be great. <laughs> I would just like to add that if, uh, if, if Sure can do a, uh, an RX, a, a dual channel RX that can actually output um, time code as well so that we can put it on cameras when we send scratch audio to a camera, it can also serve as a time code box as well. So, it to a channel and time code out so you're able to lock and send at the same time that saves a lot of having two devices fixed onto a camera one for time code and one for cameras you mean uh, dual channel so transmitters <laughs> dual channel <laughs> transmitter on the back yeah. itself yeah it's handy yeah, and, and then the dual tra channel transmitter on the back itself as well yeah, yeah. and yeah. then the dual channel receiver in the camera with the time code yeah. yeah so um definitely thanks for the feedback from Adrian and Alan's side um for us definitely uh, there are more rooms for us to explore so um, we, we definitely see there's a lot of dynamic of location sound um, in terms of uh, ENG as well. So it's very interesting, so, um, I would say, uh, industry, you know, for us to see is different type of uh, perspective. So uh, we can look into that, but um, no promises that we're going to release it, anything. But um, <laughs> we, we have something which is, um, just, just want to ask both of you gentlemen, um, if let's say you have a chance or the wish list, right, um, to do a real-time RF scan, you know, traditionally right now is you only do a sweep of the RF scan, be it on the receiver or a spectrum manager. Um, how how interesting to you for you know the real-time scan? So many to say that um, you know you have a devices that can scan real time without have having to wait a certain 
um, you know, period. Uh, is this critical for you guys? It can be a, a, a great feature, especially if you're finding it hard to to get green frequency um, all of a sudden or, you know, you you, you scan uh, beforehand. But then, right. uh, do, do, you know, you went and you set up, after you set up, you started shooting, you found that there are a million and one problems with the, the channels that you're on. They're not, you know, they're being, there's interference and stuff. Uh, I would uh, definitely at that point appreciate a real-time scan <laughs> okay. Awesome. But, yeah, but um, because most of the time I tend or, or a lot of sound uh, mixes tend to scan beforehand. But yeah. definitely, if we scan beforehand, having it real time would save a lot of time setting up as well. Does it give you more confidence? Yes, it should. Um, that it definitely be very beneficial. Confidence inspiring, I believe so. Yes, I can see there's a lot of potential because I think portability. Uh, a lot of people going towards portability. You know, example like um, you know, in the past we have a PC at home, but right now we have a laptop. So I, in terms of business perspective, I see that um, portability in the sense of location sound, portable digital wireless mic system. Um, I would say there's another. I would say it's potential business to look into it. Um, when we look into the technology, yeah, portability in terms of a spectrum scanner or even for you know an ideal size for the transmitter belt pack. Or even right now, recently, uh, we just uh, had a uh, portable, um, you know, uh, two bay of the dock charging station, which can be powered through a DC. So, um, yeah. So, meaning to say that uh, we always open up to suggestions. Um, you know, we can see, we hear you, location sound engineer. Uh, in the past, for, for our series, um, for XM Digital, we only have, um, you know, an a 8 bay type, which is quite large to travel around. So right now we try to shrink down, hopefully. I, I'm not sure, no guarantee that we can have more features of this kind of technology. But I can see there's a, you know, there's a, there's a transition for us to look into it. Also, the, I think the AXT600 currently, they should add a DC power because all the, all the four quad uh, right mount receivers all have DC power options. But it would be great that you can finish the whole DC power option on the AXT600 also. So everything can be powered by DC. Adrian, you talked about Dante Networking, about uh, the benefits it brings you in your current workflow. Do you feel that's the future going forward for, for yourself, for Astro and outside? Do you think uh, we've got to belong on the network? It's all AOIP from here on. What, um, what's your current wish list on next generation audio equipment? Um, I think, I feel like um, audio over IP is definitely the future of audio uh, because as it is, a lot of manufacturers are already implementing it into their their next generation gear, you see. For me, there's a, there's a lot of benefits, there's huge benefits when it comes to networking audio. Um, and when you start to look deeper and deeper into it, the layers of uh, what what is feasible and what's possible, it, you get, you start to see even more advantages, they, come, they, they keep arising. Uh, well, in the studio, if we just go get out of the field of location and into the studio for a while, the ability to then um, control uh, all your devices, whether it's recording or interfaces or um, playback devices, all from the same network is something that's um, relatively unheard of before. That we're able to do now all over a single Ethernet cable and sending up to 128 um, channels to and fro, maybe even up to uh, 512 channels to and fro from a single Dante uh, network cable. Uh, Dante Link, um, yeah, th this, uh, this for me, that's the future of audio. And we we'll go back to the to location sound, back to the field. I feel uh, having one cable transporting all your IOs uh, just makes sense, and it allows you to actually get further from the set. So, for example, um, if your antennas weren't very reliable, or or if you were just experiencing a bad antenna day, you could theoretically split your card in two. Where you have your because Dante itself can you have you can transmit audio over IP and also control data uh, information. So what you could essentially do is get all your wireless systems near to the set, near to the actors, and get a, like a hundred meter uh, network cable and go all the way to you at Video Village and still be able to monitor and trigger um, the recordings um, near the director. If you if you were to bring your entire system nearer to the actors, this is under the assumption that you know you don't want to throw such far antennas 
or you're not so sure about that location. Maybe it's a tricky location. Maybe frequencies are a bit weak there. Because there's a lot of things beyond what I just mentioned um, that Dante capability allows. But these are just a few of the examples that I feel um, are already in place that can help a production workflow for sound. Back to yourself, Alan. Um, what do you feel is the next generation of audio equipment? Do you feel similar views to what Adrian has just expressed there with, with AOIP? Okay, let's say we're talking about Dante networking on uh, mobile, on portable device. I think uh, more and more uh, like uh, location sound recording uh, uh, gear, they are equipped with a uh, Dante net port. So I think having a Dante plate for the ADX 5D definitely will benefit. And also um, when it comes to, when we're talking about large format show, where we are, we might not be using our portable, portable recording, uh, uh, record uh, our portable device and stuff. We might be using rack mount, and then maybe our console may be using a, a medium format console, okay, like the QL, like the CL, where we can really have tight integrations with, with the uh, show wireless, where we can actually from, from the screen itself, we can actually you know load up all, all the modules and control from there. So the other thing is that when, when the portable uh, came, comes in from, from maybe another different location, they can actually plug the, the Dante, uh, the cables, the networking cables into the switch. And from our uh, OB truck or, or the control room, we can actually mount the, the ADX 5D on our console and still utilize the portable receivers. So there are a couple of things that, um, Dante can actually, besides uh, cutting down all the power cables and everything integrated into one networking cable, that would be great because it cut down cable mass. But um, more important is the ability to control the device using a medium or large format console, sometimes which we much needed when we're doing a, a, a large format shows. And so maybe we like short of two receivers and stuff, and then they have a Dante plate, we can store it in and our QL can load it up and then just, you know, use it as like, like a rack unit. Right. Yeah. You definitely, you definitely, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a leap forward for location sound in terms of, uh, medium and large format show. Do you feel Alan that a lot of manufacturers are now collaborating with each other, talking to each other to bring a, a solution to, to the end user to market to help in those sort of views? Um, hopefully we see more and more consoles uh, 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 that will integrate tightly with the wireless manufacturer, especially on the Dante side, so that we can actually, you know, load the modules on, onto the screen itself. Like, yeah. So actually it's, like I say, um, give the control back to the sound mixer, where we don't have to go to a different outboard gear and start tweaking the gain and blah, blah, blah. And everything is centralized onto our screen and we just took it from there. Like we can actually see the transmitter uh, uh, status, the battery status and stuff like that. We feel, I mean, yeah, more secure, I would say. <laughs> Vic, we like, these, we like these collaborations that you do. Tell me about some of them that we've just mentioned there. Yeah, we do. We do have that kind of uh, technology. So um, at the current moment, a few of the product line from Sure Digital Wireless Mic ranging from uh, ULXD. Uh, ULXD is another digital wireless mic range. Um, then XM Digital, but it's more into the fixed rack mounted type of, um, you know, uh, TXRX type of uh, uh, product line. So uh, we collaborate with Yamaha, um, QL, CL, and even for another mixer, digital mixer like Allen and Eve as well. As well. Uh, at the current moment, you are able to really monitor the battery status. But of course, uh, in terms of like the transmitter status, everything, um, you have to do a remote control. Um, there's a it's an interesting idea, but at the current moment, we're only able to uh, monitor all the battery status from the mixer itself. So yeah, um, definitely there will be, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll say there's such technology that has been expanded. Uh, we we'll definitely will you know we we'll share out to to the market as well. But it's very interesting ideas, which is um something which is in advancement as well for 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 the mixer. Well, you've heard the expert views of Alan, Adrian and Vic. Now we want to hear from you, our audience participants. 
We encourage you to message us on this platform with any relevant question pertaining to portable location recording and we'll endeavour to air this in the time we have remaining on air this evening.